so I might be biting off a little bit more than I can chew here. Sometimes you just gotta play with something outlandish. The folks at Unihertz sent over the new 8849 Tank 3 Pro for me to take on a test drive and share some thoughts and I have a lot of thoughts. I'm just gonna get some stuff out of the box here for this video. So I love rugged phones and computers. I really wish we sold more industrial protected gadgets directly to consumers. I'm also formerly an Eagle Scout and that motto, be prepared, sticks with you as you get older. The Tank 3 Pro kind of tests some of my previous comments on rugged gadgets. This thing really is a Swiss army knife communications device. Like, it's not really a phone in any modern practical sense. First, this thing is massive. I, I know we make jokes about other devices like, oh, it's a beast of a phone. It's a kaiju of a phone. But now that we've overused those other adjectives, uh, none of them can really express how big the tank is compared to normal pocketable computers. I guess this is what it takes to include nearly every conceivable technology we've ever put into a phone in the past into one shell. I, I don't know, I'll throw some specs over here on the screen just so you can see what's going on here. There's a core Android device here that should be immediately familiar to most consumers. It's just surrounded by so much other stuff. A lot of these things I like, you know, like, like uh, nice clicky buttons and a power button fingerprint sensor. You just kind of do this a bit and see the phone screen turn off and on. Flipping to the other side, we've got a pair of buttons here is the volume rocker, and then also another pair of customizable buttons next to our SIM card, I mean, excuse me, dual SIM and SD card tray here on the side. Back of the tank has three regular cameras, an IR camera, a regular LED flash, a massive lantern style flashlight and IR lights for the IR camera. Bottom of the phone has the USB-C and the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack under a nice rugged port cover. That should help keep water out of there. The top has an IR blaster to use the tank as a universal remote, the projector, and the fan exhaust port. And in the shell is a 23,800 milliamp hour battery with support for 120 watt charging. I've been disappointed by a lot of rugged devices in the past, phones that are expensive and durable, built for demanding conditions, but they're also pretty low power compute gadgets. Here, we're not attacking the premium tier of devices, but the Dimensity 8200 on tap, this is a great chip. And the RAM and storage back it up nicely. I'm spending time with the 18 gigabytes of RAM model with 512 gig of storage. All that RAM and storage and we can still pop in two SIM cards and an SD card just to really back up what we can uh, carry with us out in the field. The screen is a decently bright IPS LCD with support for 60 hertz, 120 hertz, and adaptive refresh rates. And we've recently seen an arms race in OLED brightness. And this feels a bit more traditional work phone. If a little less vibrant, it's eminently practical. Easily read outdoors and respectable image quality when you're inside watching maybe your favorite animated Spider-Man feature. The size, the density of this whole package is just kind of funny for how we normally review phones. Like, you want to talk about the haptic motor? Well, the haptic motor has to make its way through a shell that has significantly more mass. It's got one of those sort of fuzzier haptic motors. On another phone, you'd probably feel that a little bit more readily, but here it's vibrating and transmitting through a lot more stuff. And the cameras are okay. Another area we often have to deal with more significant compromises on rugged phones. These aren't going to win any photography awards for the year, but, but for stills, they're not terrible. We get some punchy colors, a good zoom range. We can even capture raw files. This, this is an okay system. Yeah, I really like phones with, with flat sides that you can really hold on to like they're a proper camera, but, but this is so big, you have to be careful handling it. I was crouching to take a shot and I dropped it on my foot and it hurt. This hurt my foot. You guys don't know the things I have to do to make these video reviews for you. But talking about the cameras, the video is not great, at least not in terms of stabilization. It's super jittery in 4K. And it's got a bit of that lower bitrate feel to it. And the camera is really the only time I think this phone feels slow or laggy, like when we're switching modes or tapping to focus, the camera is not the snappiest. But then there's also this other sensor. An infrared camera is an interesting hook, giving us night vision. And it's hilarious how the phone overexposes most shots at night because of the IR lamps 
You regularly need to turn down the exposure, but it's a unique feature to add to a phone. Speaking of unique features, this has a projector on it. There's a little DLP setup that gets punchy and bright, but it requires active cooling. So we've got a little intake there and a little exhaust fan there. Once you get this turned on, once you get it fired up, it basically just sort of screen mirrors what's ever on your display. And then you've got some extra uh, settings in the projector mode to lock orientation. I never got to play with the Tank 2 Pro, but I've heard some complaints, especially uh, looking at the spec sheet here for the Tank 3 Pro, that this projector is a lower resolution uh, projector than what was on the Tank 2. This is firmly standard definition fair, and you can kind of see that. I think it's tricky because, I mean, this is kind of like reviewing earbuds or headphones, where you're most likely to use aggressive noise canceling technology, is also where you're least likely to try and reproduce an audio file grade listening experience. So where you're most apt to use a tiny portable projector, you're probably dealing with other situations that make it unlikely you're going to replicate a proper home theater experience. As I show you a video of this projector perfectly focused from my camera, the screen door effect is very clear. But as you're watching content, it's really not this bad IRL. I mean, you can clearly see it, but as images are moving, it's up to you how distracting that might be. I, I think it's funny is if you perfectly focus and then ever so slightly misfocus, it's kind of like bad anti-aliasing. I mean, it sort of smooths out the hard digital lines and blockiness. And a few odd choices, like there's this dial on the side with kind of these like spiky ridges to focus the image. There's no digital or motorized focus but there is auto keystone adjustment uh, to correct for the angle of the phone when you project it against a wall or a screen. And just kind of funny for how big and how chunky this thing is, the speakers are kind of on the thin or the hollow side. Now I'm gonna leave this running with the fan because I feel like if you were gonna use the projector and you didn't wanna cart around extra speakers, this is kind of the audio experience you'd be in for. I think the projector is fun. I think it's a it's an interesting add-on to have to sort of a portable compute device like this, but with the fan being so audible, you'd probably wanna connect this to some kind of Bluetooth speaker or, I mean, plug headphones directly into the headphone jack. It's the advantage of having a massive power bank that even with a fan running, you can watch for a really long time. Projecting an hour of video, I only saw the battery drop uh, roughly 10%. Software on tap is Android 13, no fancy skin that I can detect, but lots of custom code to run all of these additional hardware features. And there's a cute little toolbox that gives users some practical tools to play with, like a compass, a level, uh, flashlights, a tool to get water and dirt out of the ports on the phone uh, using that those vibration motors. I mean, it's just a hallmark of rugged phones that there's always an app or a collection of little mini apps that has rugged guy outdoor things to do. I can't lie, these are kind of fun. They are helpful and it's the kind of stuff I would have freaked out about when I was a kid, when I was a Boy Scout. If you like gaming phones, uh, gaming laptops, uh, building your own PC, or if you like the nothing phone and that glyph interface, I mean, sure, you have some pretty lights on the back of your phone, but can your phone really brightly recreate the experience of having police lights and a siren? I mean, let me turn, I, I, I didn't even know that that had audio associated with it. I, I only tried this with the speakers muted before, but uh, hello, fellow officer, I too am police guy. <laughs> you can imagine like walking up to a crime scene with your phone in full uh, hazard mode. It is stuff like this. I'm not sure I completely get because having hazard lights on a phone, that could actually be kind of kind of a good idea. Like. I'm the kind of nerd who still keeps an emergency kit with road flares in there. But if we were trying to caution people, wouldn't those lights be yellow, not red and blue? One of the hallmark features of this is obviously the ginormous battery. It is humongous. You have almost five times the capacity of a premium phone. So runtime as a phone is really long. It's the difference between other phones saying, you get a full day of runtime, but they really mean kind of like a 12 hour day of mixed use and keeping the screen off for a good portion of that time. 
Here, we can measure specific activities. Unihertz says you can run it for 48 hours of watching video on the screen. In my short tests, that sounds about right. I couldn't take two days just to run the battery down for one specific usage test. 98 hours of listening to music. You know what? Sure. I'm just going to give you that. I, 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 that sounds good. Let, let's go with that. And normally when we talk about fast charging, it's so amazing you can fully charge a phone in 30 minutes. But that's not what's happening here. It takes about two hours to fully charge this from empty to full. It is so hard running tests like that because it took days to run this phone down. Plugging in to occasionally top off is definitely the better way to go. I currently have 20% on this battery right now, and I'm not worried about it running out in the next day or three. And while we can certainly joke and this capacity is extreme, it makes sense in a lifestyle where you'd also want this handy to top off for other smaller portable gadgets. We've got 10 watt reverse charging through the USB-C. Unfortunately, that's not enough juice to trickle charge a small laptop, but for, but it's decent for accessories, or if you also need to keep a tablet juiced out in the field. We kind of mentioned performance, but I do want to kind of circle back to this, kind of cover this here. Our rugged phones are built to be practical, but we really haven't had fun options since the old Galaxy Active days, and it still kills me how Samsung discontinued that line of phones. Now, my last Kyocera review, that phone had a Snapdragon 480. Definitely not a screamer. This bad boy running that Dimensity chip, it puts it in another tier of performance. I recently just showed off this same chip in the Vivo, the Vivo V30 Pro, and it's a killer option for heavier CPU bound tasks, and it's a respectable solution for gaming. So what do we do with this thing? It's easy to point out how absurd this thing is. It's, it's not like regular phones. What will the average consumers say about it? But that's kind of the point. And Unihertz is one of the few companies left still pushing more extreme alternative form factors. There's absolutely no world where I would hold up my Pixel 8 Pro next to a Tank 3 Pro and earnestly recommend the same device to the same consumer for the same needs. Focusing on the traditional form factor, you're just reviewing what this thing is not instead of reviewing what this thing is. And let's be frank, given the track record from Unihertz, I would not expect a ton of software support for this. And pulling it up on AliExpress, it's it's a bit pricey, so this is really more of a tech appliance. If you're worried about the smartphone-y stuff, it's probably not going to be a good solution for you. But again, <laughs> kind of hilariously, it makes an argument for a different kind of weekender phone. I mean, use your fancy nice phone during the week and get your work done. And, and usually I recommend people keep some old little beater phone or a cheaper mid-ranger to take out to the beach or when you want to go on a hike or a camp out. But the opposite approach would be something like this, spending a little more on a tech appliance that can also fulfill some of your phone communication needs. You're going to buy it in this state. You know what it can do in this state immediately out of the box. It's probably going to stay relatively close to this state. But we should be able to think of a few people in our circles of family and friends who, I mean, this might fit the bill. By design, this is a solution that courts a much smaller potential demographic of consumers. So ultimately, I have to score it well based on the claims the manufacturer makes. This does the things that Unihertz claims it can do, and it does them rather well. It's the laziest no-brainer kind of review fodder to trot this out and go, well, it's not going to be for everybody. Yeah, that's obvious. Whether or not it's the right fit for your needs is a very specific accounting of personal preferences. For myself personally, it's a bit too much. <laughs> it's a bit too much of a gadget connected Swiss Army knife appliance, but it highlights for me though, that I wish there were more nicer rugged options that are aimed at consumers. I don't want to reminisce about old wacky Galaxy Active phones. I want something current that's purpose built for people who have different needs. So I will, of course, leave some links down below this video where you can find more information on the Tank 3 Pro. Maybe shop this bad boy online, this 
monster of a phone, this kaiju of a phone. As always, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos, subscribing to the channel. All of the support lately has been greatly appreciated. Those of you who are checking out my home site, somegadgetguy.com, maybe you're clicking on links underneath these videos and in the descriptions, or maybe you're joining the list of names scrolling by on your screen from my Patreon. That's patreon.com slash somegadgetguy. This list is basically the coolest collection of tech pals ever. <laughs> They're the coolest in the universe. So I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet at some gadget guy, basically everywhere. But these days I'm trying to spend a bit more time on the Mastodons, sharing photos on the Flickers, a little less so on the Facebooks and the Instagrams, and definitely not on the Twitters. And I will catch you all on the next video.